I'm Ellen Lindner and I really enjoy dyeing fabric. I thought you might like to see my dyeing setup, which is a temporary one. I live in Florida and most of the Floridian dyers do their working outside. However, that's just too hot for me. Plus, I like to work late at night. So I instead need to dye fabric inside. What I have to do then is convert my sewing studio to a dyeing studio. It takes me about two hours to do the whole thing, but after that I have what I consider a really excellent setup. I thought you might like to see it. So as you can see, I've swathed my studio in plastic, both design walls, both tables, and a large part of the floor. That's just how I have to do it. Okay, this is my main working space over here. I have my table elevated so that it's to a good working height, almost waist height. And then I have a pinnable board that is basically um, housing insulation covered with felt, muslin, plastic. So it's got a little bit of give to it and I can pin into it. Then over here, my wonderful husband has built me the perfect height shelf for, uh, for my water bucket, my cleanup bucket. I'm short, so reaching over the table was hurting my back. So we figured out the perfect height. He's made this retractable and it just comes out when I need it. And so that's wonderful. So I've got my cleanup bucket here and there's a wet rag in there and so I can use that to clean my various utensils and also to clean my hands. Of course, I'm wearing gloves. Then I have a, quote, dry rag here. It gets wet pretty quickly, but then I change those out as needed. This tray, this silver tray, is something cheap that I found somewhere, and I use it for anything large that's messy, and it's going to be my transport to get those items to the kitchen for cleanup. My bucket is also transport for smaller, dirtier things. Then I've got my table in front of me where I do my work. I do nearly all screen printing, so that's printing on fabric. And right now you can see I'm working on some very large swatches that will show me how the colors mix with one another. I've just recently put my dyes into squirt bottles and so far I'm really liking that. It gives me a lot of control. Over here on the floor is where I store the fabrics. After I've printed them, I roll them up in plastic, which is great. They don't take up any space and I can just throw them here on the floor, being careful not to let any wet dye spots onto that little bit of rug that, that still shows. If something has got big gloppy parts on it, which this one did with the um, black squiggles that I put on there, then I will lay that flat until it's dry to touch rather than rolling it up because I don't want to risk um, messing that up. Over here is another wonderful uh, piece of furniture that my husband built for me to my specifications. So I got the size boxes that I wanted and told him how I wanted the shelves arranged. And then I have a taller vertical spot over here for the screens. And uh, that just works out great. So I've got all of my dye supplies in there. When I'm dying, the sewing machine comes off the table and this becomes the non-messy spot where I've got plastic for wrapping up things I've got my fabric that's ready to be printed. It's already been treated with soda ash. And then as I begin to take fabrics out of the washer and dryer, they'll get stacked up here complete. Over here on the low side of the table uh, is where I tend to keep the stencils, the dry dye mixes, and some of my tools. This is where I mix up things. And if I want to do something for instance, stamping, or I might prefer to sit, then that happens over here on the low side. 